All right, so today we're going to go through a quick review of Unit 5 of AP Stats, Sampling Distributions. This one really provides the basis for the rest of the curriculum. Um, so yeah, yeah, let's get right into it. So first, we need to differentiate between a statistic and a parameter. A statistic is just any number that describes uh, something that comes from a sample of data. And then the opposite of that is the parameter, which is anything that describes uh, something that comes from an entire population of data. Um, the most common ones is mean and proportion, which we'll get and dive more into later. Um, but there are other ones, like you can see, there's like slope and stuff. Um, there's a unit on that as well, chi-squared. But uh, what we need to know right now is what exactly is a sampling distribution? Well, it is a probability distribution of a statistic that is obtained through repeated sampling of a specific population, right? So let's say your population, I say it has like a mean of 10, right? So what I'm going to do is I conduct simulations, right, and take repeated samples from that population find the mean of those samples, and then each of those means of the sample counts as one data point. And then I'm gonna put that data point on a new distribution, and then I'm gonna do this simulation multiple times, and then I'm gonna ultimately find the mean of this new sampling distribution. And theoretically, it should line up because it is a unbiased estimator, right? Which is when the statistics sampling distribution is equal to that of the parameter, right? Like we said before with the mean, a mean is an example of an unbiased estimator because if we have the mean of the population at 10, if we do the repeated sampling and then take the means of those, those should also equal 10 in the long run, okay? So now we're going to dive into more specifics. The first is more specifically talking about proportions. Um, so like we said before, here's a simplified basically what we're actually doing. We're going to take repeated samples of the same size from a population, then find the proportion of each sample, and then plot that information on a distribution, okay? So we're going to dive into a couple key components. We're not going to do any full significance tests or confidence intervals in this unit, but this is stuff that you need to know and you need to understand in order to do those in later units, okay? So we have finding the mean and standard deviation, Basically, a bunch of formulas. These are on your reference sheet. I'm not going to you know, go too much into this to waste your time. We need to know that increasing the sample size will increase your variability. Sorry, decrease your variability, right? Because if you're increasing the sample size, it's more accurate, right? So then you get less variability. Now we're going to talk about a couple assumptions uh, and conditions. So basically things to, in order to conduct a significance test, these are a couple things that have to be true. First, you need random sampling and assignment. Then you need to satisfy the 10% condition. It's basically where each sample that you take has to be less than or equal to 10% because you want the trials to be able to be treated as independent, right? Um, where we don't have like replacements. So that is represented as N is less than 0.1 or 10% of the entire population, which is denoted as big N. Then uh, last one is large counts condition, right? So basically what you need is the number of successes and failures have to be both equal to or above 10, and that is the formula for it. That is basically where you have the number of uh, the size of your sample, n, times the proportion, n times 1 minus p, so that is going to basically represent the number of failures that you have. Now, it's also important to note that if your sampling distribution is approximately normal, which it should be because, remember, we have to satisfy the large counts condition, then we can find the z value, which is the number of standard deviations away that our, uh, say, statistic is away from the mean. So in that case, once we get the z value, what we can do is solve for the probability of something, right? Because a lot of times these questions are going to say, like, what is the probability that the sample proportion is blank percent less than or equal to or greater than, right? In that case, we can calculate the z uh, value either using a formula, as you can see here, so I'm put it down so the entire formula shows, or you can just plug it into your entire calculator and it does all the math for you. Um, but to solve for the actual probability, guess what? You're also going to use your calculator using normal CDF, or you can use table A. All right, so now jumping over, very similar, we're going to be talking about means to finish off the unit. Um, you're going to be taking repeated samples just like the proportions, but instead of taking the proportion of each sample, you're taking the means of each sample and applying that onto a distribution. You have some more formulas for the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution there. These are also on your reference table. Increasing sample size, same thing here, is going to decrease the variability. And then you also need to meet pretty much the same conditions. The random sampling assignment, 10% condition, a large counts condition. Now, I do want to note that you would do ran random uh, assignment. That is usually only for experiments. 
But if you're doing samples, usually it's just random sampling. Uh, and then there's the formula for the Z value. Again, you can just use your calculator. Honestly, the most important thing in AB stat is know how to use your calculator because that will carry you a lot. If find a, finding the probability is the same thing as finding the probability for, um, sorry, proportions. And then another thing we want to introduce here is the central limit theorem. Okay. So your sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal, even if the population distribution isn't, if it meets the central limit theorem. Okay. What is the central limit theorem? Basically all your sample size just has to be at least 30, right? So that is pretty much the entirety of unit five.